Did you know that the moon isn't actually round? Surprising, isn't it? Yes, it's true. The moon, our nocturnal companion lighting up our night skies, isn't perfectly spherical as it may appear to our eyes. Instead, it's more akin to an egg shape, or to be more accurate, an oblate spheroid. But how did it come to be this way? To understand this, we need to take a trip back in time. Roughly four and a half billion years ago, when our moon was formed, a massive object about the size of Mars collided with Earth, and the debris from this colossal impact eventually coalesced to form the moon. Now this newly formed moon was spinning rapidly, causing it to stretch out along the equator. Over time, its rotation slowed, but the shape remained. Hence, the moon we see today is wider at its equator and flattened at its poles, resembling an egg more than a perfect sphere. But why does it appear round to us? Well, this is a trick played by our eyes and mind, a phenomenon known as moon illusion. When we look at the moon, especially when it's close to the horizon, our brain compares it with nearby objects like trees or houses, and this comparison makes the moon appear larger and rounder than it actually is. Moreover, the moon's surface is covered with craters, mountains and valleys that create an uneven landscape, further enhancing the illusion of roundness. And from our vantage point on Earth, we can only see one side of the moon due to a process called tidal locking, which makes it difficult for us to perceive its true shape. So, the next time when you gaze at the moon, remember it's not as round as it appears. It's a celestial body with its own unique shape and character, a testament to the dynamic and fascinating universe we live in. Now, you might not expect the moon to be a dusty place, but it is. Indeed, beneath the moon's tranquil, silvery aura lies a hidden secret. A secret that's not so much dark as it is, well, dusty. You see, the moon's surface isn't made up of smooth, hard rock as one might imagine. Instead, it's covered in a fine layer of dust known as lunar regolith. This dust, composed of minute fragments of silicate, is the result of billions of years of meteoric impact, breaking down the moon's surface into sand-like particles. Now you might be thinking, what's the big deal with a little dust? Well, this isn't your average household dust. Lunar dust can be quite the nuisance, especially when it comes to space exploration. It's sharp, abrasive, and clingy, making it a potential hazard to both equipment and astronauts. It sticks to everything, spacesuits, rovers, you name it. In fact, during the Apollo missions, astronauts found the dust so pervasive that it even started wearing through their boots. And it's not just a physical concern. Lunar dust could also pose problems for astronauts' health. You see, it's so fine that it can be easily inhaled, potentially causing respiratory issues. And because it's been baked in the harsh radiation of space, it could even be toxic. But the dust isn't all bad news. In fact, it holds some fascinating scientific potential. For instance, it could provide key insights into the moon's geological history, opening doors to understanding the early solar system. Plus, there's even talk of utilizing this lunar dust, using it as a raw material for building structures on the moon. Imagine that, buildings made of moon dust. So while it might be a challenge, this dusty secret of the moon also holds promise. It's a reminder that even the seemingly barren and inhospitable landscapes of our universe can be rich with potential. Yes, the moon, our serene celestial neighbor, is a dusty world, and it's one that continues to intrigue and inspire us as we seek to uncover its many secrets. You might have heard about the moon's influence on our tides, but its gravitational pull has more far-reaching effects. The moon, our closest celestial neighbor, holds Earth in a gravitational embrace that shapes our planet in ways that are often overlooked. Beyond the ebb and flow of the tides, the moon's gravity leaves an indelible impression on the Earth. Let's start with the tides. The moon's gravity pulls at the Earth, causing the oceans to bulge outwards. This results in two high tides per day, one on the side of the Earth facing the moon and one on the opposite side. This tug of war between the Earth and the Moon is what causes our ocean tides. But it's not just the seas that feel the Moon's pull. 
The moon's gravity also causes a slight elongation of the Earth itself. This is known as Earth's tidal bulge. Despite being less noticeable than the oceanic tides, it is a clear demonstration of the moon's gravitational power. Furthermore, the moon's gravitational pull is gradually slowing down the Earth's rotation. Billions of years ago, the Earth spun much faster than it does today. However, the friction caused by the tides, driven by the moon's gravity, has acted as a brake, slowing our planet's spin. This has led to our days gradually getting longer over a very, very long period of time. And this gravitational relationship is a two-way street. The Earth's gravity also affects the moon, causing it to be tidally locked with us. This means the same side of the moon always faces Earth, a phenomenon we call the moon's near side. In conclusion, the moon's gravitational influence extends beyond just causing tides. It shapes the Earth, slows down its rotation, and locks the moon in a constant gaze towards us. So, the moon's pull is more powerful than you might have thought. Ever wondered what's on the dark side of the moon? Well, it's not what you might think. When we speak of the dark side of the moon, we're not talking about a place where the sun doesn't shine. Instead, this term refers to the side of our lunar neighbor that's perpetually turned away from us, hidden from our earthly view. It's a side of the moon that remained a mystery until the mid-20th century, when spacecraft finally gave us a glimpse of what lies on the other side. Now let's debunk a common misconception. The term dark side doesn't mean it's always night there. Remember, the moon rotates on its axis, just like Earth. So this so-called dark side experiences both day and night, just like we do here on Earth. What makes it dark is not its exposure to the sun, but its invisibility to us. The far side of the moon is quite distinct from the side we're familiar with. It's covered with thousands of craters from billions of years of asteroid impacts. It's a rugged, heavily cratered landscape that's starkly different from the smoother terrain we see from Earth. One of the most remarkable features on this side of the moon is the South Pole Aitken Basin. It's one of the largest and oldest impact structures in the solar system, stretching about 1,500 miles across and several miles deep. It's so big that if it were on Earth, it would stretch from Washington, D.C. to Denver, Colorado. Contrary to what some science fiction may have you believe, there are no alien bases or mysterious artifacts hiding on the dark side of the moon. It's just a quiet, cratered landscape that's been largely untouched for billions of years. In fact, the dark side of the moon is of great interest to scientists because it offers a chance to study the moon's early history, unobscured by the effects of weather, erosion, or human activity. The dark side of the moon, it turns out, isn't so dark after all. Now, this might sound strange, but did you know that our moon is actually shrinking? Yes, you heard that right. Our beloved lunar companion is losing its size little by little every passing year. How, you ask? It's all due to a process called thermal contraction. As the moon's interior cools down, it causes the moon to contract or shrink. Now, this isn't a rapid process. The moon isn't going to disappear from our skies anytime soon. It's been happening for billions of years and will continue for billions more. Picture this. Imagine a grape turning into a raisin. As it dries out, the grape shrinks, right? The same thing is happening to the moon, but on a much, much slower scale. As the moon's interior cools and solidifies, it shrinks, causing the moon's surface to wrinkle and buckle, creating thousands of small cliffs, or scarps as they are scientifically known. But don't worry, even though the moon is shrinking, it's not going anywhere. This process is incredibly slow. In fact, over the last several hundred million years, the moon has only shrunk by about 150 meters. That's less than half the height of the Empire State Building. So, while it's fascinating to think about, it's not something that we'll notice in our lifetime or even in the lifetime of our great, 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 great grandchildren. However, this doesn't mean that the shrinking of the moon is without consequences. These scarps or cliffs are a result of the moon's contraction and they're causing moonquakes. Yes, that's earthquakes on the moon. These moonquakes can be as powerful as a five 
on the Richter scale. So the moon as we know it is slowly but surely changing. It's a fascinating reminder that nothing in our universe is static. Everything is in a constant state of flux, even our closest celestial neighbor.